It wasn't until Clay felt the sand under his talons and heard the roaring of the dragons in the stands that he realized he hadn't quite thought this plan through. He had no idea what his fighting skills would be like against an unknown dragon. His mind went blank as the Skywing guards dropped a hissing ice wing onto the ground opposite him. Did he know anything about ice wings? The sun was high in the sky and was much warmer in the arena than up on their prison spires. Clay could see beads of silvery liquid dripping through the ice wing's glacier blue scales. Above them, Queen Scarlet smirked from her balcony, with Glory sleeping serenely beside her. The same Skywing announcer from the day before strutted to the center of the arena and bellowed at the crowd. After last month's battle with Blazer's army, our queen's dungeons were stuffed with ice wing prisoners of war. Only nine have survived. After two wins, I give you Fjord of the Ice Wings. Fjord lashed his tail and snarled at Clay. And in this corner, an unusual case. A mudwing, but not one of our allies. No, this dragon net was found hiding under our mountains, protected by the talents of peace. Is he one of the dragonets of destiny? Not if he loses this battle. A murmur of laughter rippled around the seats, but in the closest faces Clay could see expressions of uneasiness, and he thought concern. He spotted a large mudwing in one of the balconies, frowning down at him. Try to stop this, Clay thought at him, praying hard. Do something, I'm one of you. But the mudwing shifted his gaze away, as if he didn't want to watch but couldn't afford to leave. The Skywing announcer went on. If these prophesied dragon nets are as wonderful and legendary as they're supposed to be, this should be a showdown to remember. I hope you're prepared to impress us, dragon of the mud. I present to you... Clay of the Mudwings. Claws up, teeth ready, fight. Clay blinked as the Skywing flew out of the arena. He had never been called of the Mudwings before. It might have been a warmer feeling if he hadn't been surrounded by more than 200 dragons, including Mudwings, ready to applaud his imminent death. He felt quite far from wonderful and legendary as the Icewing slithered toward him. This was it, kill or be killed. Time to find out if he did have a monster inside, and if it was the useful kind, or the kind that would make him hate himself afterward. Or both. Fjord's pale blue scales were the color of sky reflected in the snow on the distant mountain peaks. His eyes were slightly darker blue and full of malice. Extra horns like a ruff of icicles stood out on his head. A long claw scratched down his neck that had barely begun to heal, with dried blood still sticking to the scales around it. He hissed, darting a deep blue, forked tongue between his icicle-sharp teeth. Uh, hello, Clay said as the ice wing drew closer. Fjord, right? Fjord stopped and stared at him, still flicking his tongue in and out. He was only a head taller than Clay, but he looked a lot older and scarier. I've never met an ice wing, Clay said, edging back a step. I've never met much of anyone, really. I mean, I guess I read that you were all the color of ice, but I didn't realize ice, and ice came in so many colors. Like, you know, blue. Very surprising. It's cool, though. <laughs> no pun intended. Boo! Called several dragons from the upper seats. More blood! More death! Somebody hit somebody! Are you trying to get us both killed? The ice wing growled. Shut up and let me kill you. I'd rather not, Clay said, stumbling back another few steps. A flicker of movement caught his eye, and he glanced up into the sky. Starflight was nearly leaning all the way off his column, flailing his tail and bound wings frantically at Clay, trying to tell him something. But what? Something about night ice wings? Something they had learned from the scrolls and lectures? Something pretty important, judging from the way Starflight was freaking out. The night wing was pointing to his mouth. Fire? Clay looked at Fjord dubiously. He didn't think ice wings could breathe fire. Wouldn't they end up melting their palaces every time they used it? Then again, Fjord was definitely doing something with his mouth, and it wasn't smiling. Clay ducked and rolled out of the way just as a blast of what looked like sparkling smoke shot out of Fjord's mouth. A tiny bit of it brushed his wingtip, and Clay felt a horrible chill rattle through his whole body. Oh, right, freezing death breath. That is important. Thanks, Starflight. 
Now he remembered the freezing streams of cold air that ice wings could shoot from their mouths. Of course, he couldn't remember anything about how to fight it. Fire would probably help, though. Clay inhaled, pulling the warmth up from his chest as Fjord's head snapped around toward him. The ice wing opened his mouth to breathe on Clay again, and Clay sent a blast of fire right between his teeth. Fjord jerked back and scrambled across the sand, batting at his mouth with his clamped wings. The flames had been swallowed instantly by the chill of his scales, but the ice wing looked even angrier than before. Sorry, Clay said. Listen, do we have to fight? What'll happen to us if we... Fjord interrupted by racing at him with his front talons outstretched. Clay had to shut up and dart out of the way, barely dodging the sharp claws. Fjord's long, whip-thin tail snaked around and whacked him across the face, so Clay was momentarily blinded. Instinctively, Clay threw his wings over his head and lashed out with his back talons. He felt one connect and heard Fjord roared in pain. As his sight cleared, he saw that he accidentally hit the scratch on Fjord's neck, which was bleeding again. Fjord fell back for a moment, touching his neck gingerly with his claws. His tail lashed and his bound wings beat the air. How am I going to get out of this? Clay thought. He couldn't feel the monster rising up inside him. Whatever had driven him to attack the other dragonets as hatchlings was buried too deep. He didn't want to kill Fjord. He didn't want to kill anyone. He wondered if he should have let Tsunami fight instead. No, I'm the first hatch and the biggest. I couldn't let any of the others risk themselves when I could fight for them. He clawed at the sand and lowered his head to stare at Fjord's eyes. I have to kill him, don't I? There must be part of me that can do that. He'd always hoped his monster wouldn't be necessary. Some part of him had always figured that the prophecy would somehow come true. The war would end and all dragon killing could be avoided forever and ever. Without him ever having to hurt another dragon. But it's too soon for the prophecy. Our fault for escaping early. Still, we had to, to save glory. Boo! More dragons in the crowd shouted. A sheep could have won this fight by now. What are you doing? Thinking? Less thinking, more killing. Claw him! Claw him! Claw him! They sound just like Kestrel. Clay couldn't tell if they were rooting for him or Fjord, or whether they just wanted to see someone die. Fjord dropped to all fours and ran at Clay again, hissing with his tongue as if he were about to shoot more freezing air. Kestrel's shouted battle commands flashed through Clay's head. He dropped and rolled under Fjord as the ice wing flew at him. With a quick slash, Clay raked Fjord's underbelly, leaving a trail of blood through the softer scales. He flipped back upright and spun to face the other dragon again. Fjord shrieked, doubling over. Yay! shouted the crowd. What's wrong with you? Fjord yelled at Clay. That's not how Mudwings fight. I was trained in your techniques. Well, I wasn't, Clay said. Sorry. He wondered whether he fought like a Skywing instead, the way Kestrel had always wanted. He had a feeling she would say no, he didn't fight like a Skywing, he fought like a lame wildebeest. But at least it seemed to catch his opponent off guard. Clay dug his claws into the sand, watching Fjord clutch his bleeding belly. If he attacked now, he could surprise the other dragon and maybe even win. But he felt bad enough, seeing the damage he'd inflicted. He couldn't imagine doing worse. Like what, could he break Fjord's neck? He shuddered, remembering again the crack of Dune's neck snapping. That wasn't him, no matter what Kestrel or Peril said. All right, dragons. Queen Scarlet's voice cut through the rubble of the crowd, and everyone went still. Fjord and Clay, we don't have all day. Some of us have kingdoms to run. One of you kill the other one right now, or I'm coming down there to end you both myself. Fjord snarled and dashed at Clay again. There was no time to think. Clay reared up and grabbed the extra horn around Fjord's head, shoving the ice wing snout aside before the freezing breath hit him. The cold air blasted toward the lowest row of seats, and several dragons clambered over each other to get away, yelping with alarm. Fjord's talons locked around Clay's chest, and they grappled across the sand. Clay's wings were pummeled by Fjord's, which was silvery and strangely tough. His talons were full, trying to keep Fjord's head pointed away from him. He couldn't fight back as Fjord clawed his shoulders. Bright pain zigzagged through Clay's scales. Time to die, Fjord growled. He whipped his tail around to trip Clay's back legs, and the two dragons went down in a heap with Fjord on top. The Icewing wrapped his claws around Clay's neck and pressed hard. Failing again, 
Clay thought hopelessly as the strength in his arms began to fade. For the last time. In a moment he'd have to let go, the Ice Wing's head would be free, and Fjord would blast Clay with a final killing breath. Then it would be all over.